this year's shows of the season. There's some language, and it's definitely not a kid's show. So that has kind of posed um, some difficulties in marketing it, because the name suggests one thing, but the content actually suggests quite another. Um, in this theater, we kind of reserve it for the edgier material. Um, now, being a community theater, we don't get too edgy with our, um, with our shows, not like at the Blue Barn Theater downtown or a theater that you might attend in Chicago, um, just because our patrons tend to like the more wholesome product. But this show is, or this theater is the one where we have, uh, we can put on a production with maybe some language or some sexual content, and it's uh, hopefully known that it's used for that sort of material. Mm -hmm. So we try to um, announce that in the marketing materials, and it doesn't always have racy material, you know, sometimes it's just the show itself just lends itself better to a small space. Um, but that's kind of one of the aspects of this theater. Yes. So does anybody have any questions about this particular theater and its content? And designed here in-house. Um, so like this set here, there's these tiles aren't actually tiles. Wow. Our scenic painter just yes. painted that on to make it look like that. Mm. And so we have a, a, a whole shop crew. And so once this show is over, all of this will be torn down and this floor will be painted black again and it'll um, oh. Because this is all painted in two, this is an actual wood, and it will be changed for the next show. So, mm -hmm. yes. And so, this, if you saw, um, like the show we did in here before this was pretty much a rock show. It was called Yesterday and Today, and it's a band that comes in and plays oh. Beatles songs and takes Beatles requests. So obviously this right here wouldn't oh, yeah, work yeah. for a Beatles show. So it was, you know, a lot more lights and just a backdrop and not props or anything. So each set changes with every show. Um, this particular one is supposed to take place in a junior high. And the show actually has adults playing 12-year-old characters. So they're supposed to be junior high kids, but they're actually all in their 20s, so. Mm. Mm -hmm. so you the, uh, uh, yeah, we do have, the show in here actually right now is a musical, um, and it just depends. Um, this is the fourth show that we've had in here this season. The first two weren't musicals, they were just straight plays. One was a one-woman show about Ann Landers, and um, the other one was one called A Thousand Clowns, and they were both really interesting sets that had to change um, during the show and really prop heavy sets and then the third one was that Beatles show and then this one and musicals in here are a little difficult for the crew because this theater wasn't designed um, to be perfectly acoustic for the musicals but some just lend itself better themselves better to a small space and if they do have racier content, we want it to be in this theater rather than the main stage theater, which is kind of more known as family-friendly shows. How many people come to by one time here? Right now, there's um, it's set for 230, I believe, and that's the most that can fit in here. But it um, mm. changes for the first show of the season. We had like. 198, so it usually ranges between 200 and 230. Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, and ticket prices actually don't change per theater, they change per production. So every adult musical ticket is $40, whether it's in here wow. or the main stage theater. Every comedy and drama that's a non musical is $35, and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter which, um, which theater you're in. But really, if you look around, there's not such a thing as a bad seat in this house. You know, wherever you sit, you're going to get good sound quality. You're going to be able to see just fine. And that's really the same with the other one, too. 
um, the Orpheum downtown. I don't know if you guys have been there. It's a beautiful theater. They bring in Broadway acts. Um, but if you get anywhere behind the first balcony, it's really kind of hard to see and it's really kind of hard to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that you have to expect there. You pay more for the better seats. We have one price for all of our seats in a show because oh. we, you know, we tote that we don't have a bad seat in the house. So, mm. and I think you'll find that. I've sat in the last row over in that theater and it, I didn't think twice about it. I could see everything fine. The last production I saw here was in this theater and it was the awesome 80s pop. Yeah. <laughs> I heard all about it. I and it was audience interactive, so that was quite different. Yeah, it was good. That's good. That's good. I know they had fun with that one. Any other questions about this space, or should we move to the so next one? This is a black box theater. The what? Black box, black box theater. The black box theater means uh, you can change the hierarchy by yes. this. No, just set the way it is. We do. Um, a lot of big musicals in here. Mm -hmm. um, we did Footloose the musical in the fall. We're going to do Guys and Dolls in the spring. And our next musical is Nonsense. Nonsense. Um, so they're yeah. So they're working. They're working on that set right now. And um, this show opens a week from Friday. Mm -hmm. So they pretty much have to have the set done by the end of this week, so they can start rehearsing on stage mm -hmm. at the beginning of next week, so they can get ready for opening. Oh yes. So this content in this theater tends to be a little more family friendly. Mm. Um, we've done things like Annie and Peter Pan. We don't do a lot of kids shows, but something hopefully for the whole family. So the marketing message might be a little different in this theater than the other one. Oh, because yeah. the content's different. Like assembly. Sure, yeah, I think we've probably done The Sound of Music at some point. We've been open for 86 years. This is our, our 86th season. So there's a lot of shows that we've done two times um, or long ago. So we've never done Nonsense before, though. Mm. And this season, I think a lot of them we haven't done in the past. So a lot of new ones. Mm. And once again, you can see, you know, like the scenic painter has painted all of those backdrops. And they just... Everything's created in the back of the house. Yeah. And I'll show you that too. So, any Great. particular questions about this theater? Uh, Are they painting an show or Are they painting an episode? Yes, yes. The scenic artist uh, paints something new for every show. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, like the last show on the main stage was The Odd Couple, and the set was made to look like an apartment. So, you know, she painted the walls and, um, you know, the art and everything like that to make it look like a Manhattan apartment. This is the arch that goes over the stage, typically. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've been in theater. It was the 80s. So, um, and uh, so everything's pretty well set. Mm -hmm. For every production, they change the set or the mm -hmm. environment. So every different production, every different player musical they have here, they ch they built this mm -hmm. for each one new in both theaters. Right. Yeah. Right. The the musical uh, the play it must be a practice. Yes. Yes. This theater have a practice on the streets. Um, there's rehearsal studios the rehearsal throughout studio? the building, oh, and yeah. sometimes there's three plays rehearsing at once with mm -hmm. another one auditioning. So there's um, a rehearsal studio in back, there's a dance studio and classroom in the basement. Um, mm -hmm. As soon as somebody can move to the stage, they move to the stage so they can free up another area. Mm -hmm. During Christmas time, um, we have uh, the Nebraska Theater Caravan is based out of the Playhouse and it's a professional touring, touring wing. And so um, they take a Christmas carol on the road from pretty much Thanksgiving to Christmas every year mm -hmm. and tour the uh, East Coast and the Midwest. 
Well, as they're preparing for that, they're all rehearsing here mm. every day during the day. And our artistic director, associate artistic director, and resident director are all working with them, with the stage managers here and the music directors and the choreographers. So they're rehearsing all over the building during the day. A couple years ago, and it was named uh, for Howard and Rhonda Hawks. They were the big donors for that renovation. And so you can see, you know, these seats are very comfortable. And if you look here, like, I have plenty of lights. Oh, yes. If you get into the older theaters, it's, especially, I mean, I'm a short person, but especially mm -hmm. people who are tall, you're going to feel very yeah. So yeah. their donation allowed us to make these every experience more comfortable because it used to be 601 seats here and now it's 500 You know, some seats in the renovation, but it's more comfortable for our patients. And you can see the walls, it was designed for musicals. You know, the acoustics were improved and this, you know, paint job and new purpose of the stage and just in general improved. What year was the renovation done? I think it was just Two years ago. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Really recently. Yeah, I've been getting to see it ever since I get involved in the social from that. It's probably three years Right, ago. that would have been before the renovation. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's great. I mean, volunteer actors, and that's what makes it a community. But we do um, purchase the rights from musical companies and then perform them. So this year, you know, it will be Footloose the Musical and Guys and Dolls. And last year it was Fiddler on the Roof and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. So those are big name musicals that have won, you know, a lot of Tonys or a lot of awards on Broadway. And as soon as the rights become available, we can purchase those to produce the shows ourselves. So how many uh, will you play uh, performance? Uh, performance means the musical or yeah. How many of each? Yeah. How, you, or how, how long does it no, run? No, how many uh, did you uh, will you play performance every year? I mean. Uh, During the season. How many? Yeah, how many yeah, plays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have nine regular season shows, oh, yeah. and then we have a Christmas Carol in addition to that, and then we have our December show, which the last few years has been that Beatles show, Yesterday and Today. And then during the summer, a lot of times we'll bring in um, a professional show, um, like we've done Late Night Catechism in the past, or Defending the Caveman. So we're still um, promoting those shows, but the way those work um, is we do a split with them. They take half the money, we take half the money, or whatever percentage split it is, rather than us buying those rights and having our own performers put those on. And it really is a nice break on you know, the directors and the, the costume people who don't have to create all that stuff for those because they come kind of ready-made, ready-packaged. But yeah, we do um, nine regular season shows, so it's usually an opening musical yes. and then two smaller shows. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half of the season, we have an opening play and then a musical in the Howard Drew, a musical here, another play, another play over there, and then the ending musical. So, and the, the opening and closing musicals of the year, those are the big ones aside from A Christmas Carol. That's always our biggest show. So is there online uh, online ticket system? Is there a what? Online ticket system. Yes. Um, we recently partnered with Ticket Omaha, and they're a website that does the ticketing for the Omaha Performing Arts and the Symphony and Opera. And so now if people want to buy tickets online, they go to Ticket Omaha, and our website links to that too. Um, but people can still call our box office, and they can still visit the box office. And, you know, it's just kind of whatever is easiest for them because online you have to pay a handling fee. We don't charge a handling fee if you come in or call. Um, but our box office is mainly volunteers with a couple permanent employees. And so we can't necessarily accommodate, you know, a lot of the things that a fully paid box office could do. So is it the same cost about seat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. It doesn't, it's all, all the same? It's all the same, same cost. Oh. 
Yeah, because yeah. that goes back to the idea of not being a bad seat in the house. Mm. So. And a discount for a student? Yes, there is a discount for students. <laughs> um, it's a really good discount, actually, because a musical for an adult is $40. Mm. For students, it's 24 So oh, that's yeah. a huge discount. Yeah. And for a regular play, mm -hmm. it's 35 for an adult. A student gets a uh, $21 ticket. And then also, we have a really good um, deal for young professionals. They can buy a Rising Star membership if they're between the ages of like 21 and 35. And it's only $30. And after that, tickets are only $10. So they break even after one musical. And they can do that all season long and up to two tickets. So we sometimes, have some good sometimes. Price breaks. Uh, uh, didn't sell all the seat mm -hmm. and remain seat. How can operating there mm -hmm. see it? Um, so uh, that does happen where sometimes we just can't fill a house um, and we'll give away tickets to organizations like Boys Town or oh, yeah. some other nonprofit organizations that mm. might not get to mm. enjoy the theater. Mm. And so hopefully, you know, there's some dates that are just hard, like the Super Bowl. Or, like, if we were to have a show on 4th of July mm. or something like that. There's some dates where people are just doing other things, which I totally understand, you know. I would watch the Super Bowl, too, instead of coming mm. to the theater. And so, yeah. dates like that, we either, we first try to discount the tickets. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to do a pretty generous discount to really appeal to people. And if we still can't sell the seats, then we'll give them away. And... That won't ever happen in the Howard Drew since there's only 200 seats to fill. But in mm. here with the 550 seats, and we do a show for five or six weeks, um, six nights a week. So sometimes we'll we'll do that if it's if it's not selling mm. very well. Uh, sometimes the NPO of uh, this theater uh, did not commercial focus, uh, so sometimes lose the. Uh, every uh, uh, the play was mm -hmm. the make loss. Mm -hmm. How can um, the field the loss? Sure. Are you, are you saying like sometimes if the show doesn't do very well and we yeah, lose yeah, yeah. money, yeah, what do yeah. we do? Well, we never lose money on a show. We always never not lose money. However, oh. sometimes we, we set a budget for each show the mm. year prior and we try to reach that budget. We don't always reach the budget, but we never lose money. So mm. the thing is, wow. if, we, if we don't reach that budget though, we've already budgeted to spend that money in other places. So we have to come up with ideas to try to close the gap. Mm. Now, sometimes a show will go way over budget, you know, and do a lot better. And so that mm. can make up for some of the shows oh, that yeah. don't reach budget. Um, otherwise, sometimes we have to maybe come up with a special event. Um, a few years ago, there was um, some disagreements uh, between staff here, and one of the shows ended up not running. And so that was an entire show that, you know, we didn't make the budget on because we didn't make any money on it because oh. they never, it never went on. And that was in the papers and everything. Um, so they had to come up with an event or fundraising efforts or new marketing efforts to try to make up mm. that money. So those in those situations, you just really have to try to think of ways to close the gaps. But yeah, that absolutely does happen. Sometimes um, the overall budget for the year mm -hmm. is met and exceeded and sometimes mm -hmm. you don't make it and that's just one of the realities of mm -hmm. running an organization such as this. This theater is open to the balance sheet of the annual report. What was that? Balance sheet. About uh, the income balance. and the expense, uh -huh. about the financial state mm -hmm. sheet. Okay. Yes. Like the balance sheet? Yeah, yeah, balance sheet. Yeah. And what's your question with To it? open uh, for, by internet or another, another method to open the public? Or uh, like putting the, letting other people, letting the public see the balance sheet? Yeah, Is yeah, that what yeah. you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think that that's something that we typically do. Um, I think that usually companies that do that are government companies that have to let yeah, people yeah, see yeah. it, or private companies will show their investors or their stockholders. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
Um, but that's not typically information that we release to the oh, public. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of our box office information is kept confidential. In Korea, many corporate to donate uh, Mecena program, Mecena programs, they want to uh, donate uh, culture, mm -hmm. the culture is about the theaters or the gallery, about the concert. Uh -huh. <coughs> so uh, the donations companies worried about uh, the stage must be go on mm -hmm. from the period. Sometimes was the uh, the loss makes them stop the staging okay. in commercial side. So every time we, we need uh, the uh, financial stables, uh -huh. it is uh, to make an uh, important uh, decision mm -hmm. fact. Sure. Yes, so I want to know about that. Yeah. Um, so with donations, are you asking like if, yes. the, if corporate donations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, corporate sponsorships is what we call them, and we do have those also. Um, so every show, we're getting ready to announce our next season um, at the beginning of March. And right now, our development director is working with um, corporate sponsors to see mm -hmm. if they will sponsor these shows. And um, she does; she's she's great. She always gets most of the show sponsored. So we'll have um, a producing partner or a main sponsor for a certain amount, and that's the highest amount. Um, and then if there's an orchestra, there's an opportunity for orchestra sponsors or costume sponsors or special effects. And everyone's a different amount. And so they, in turn, receive different levels um, of benefits from no, us. Yeah. And so in return, we put their um, company logo on all of our ads and mm. all of our marketing materials, yeah. our website, Ticket Omaha website. Um, we do curtain speeches before every show in here where we thank our sponsors. And so they get their name recognition in front of all those people. In addition to that, um, they get tickets to preview night. Uh, they can have a, a pre-show party here. So if it's for um, a company, a lot of times they'll have their employees come in and, you know, it's kind of like a gift to them or their investors or their clients or whoever. So it's really nice for them because big corporations have an allotted amount to donate, you know, for tax mm -hmm. purposes and for community purposes. And so in addition to that, they, I feel like they really do get a lot of good benefits as far as community exposure, having their mm -hmm. name out there, tickets, yeah. facility usage, things like that. But yeah, mm. that's a big part of our funding. Sometimes, do you have a risk to, to donations companies? Some kinds of casino or something like uh, uh, it is a gamble or something like uh, it is not social, socially allowed uh, uh, commonly, it is not only the companies to donate uh, uh, in the programs, mm -hmm. do you have any restrict to? Yeah, programs? we have um, we have a program for every show. Yes. It's called our prompter, and at the beginning of the season, people can buy ads mm -hmm. for the whole season, mm -hmm. and then it's printed in color. Or if mm -hmm. they want to buy ads per show, they can buy it, and it's in black and white. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <coughs> but yeah, they can advertise their business in our program. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, any companies can donate in these programs? There is no limit? Um, with, about the number of companies or the type of company? Yes, type of company. Type of company. You know, that's the director of sales who does that, but I, I don't think that she's probably ever really been faced with that. I would think that if it was a casino or something like that, it would be mm -hmm. fine if they wanted to advertise. Um, however, if it was a really ethically questionable company yeah, or yeah, morally yeah, yeah, questionable yeah, yeah. company, then maybe it would have to be um, taken into consideration oh, if that yeah, was yeah. the kind of representation we would want in our mm, program. Yes. I don't know if that, if that issue has ever come up, though. Yes. Yeah. Should we move out of this theater? Yes. Okay. Yeah.